Got another exam question here on the transition elements topic, so we're up to number four now. As with the others, the link to the questions in the description of the video, so just click on that, have a go at the questions, and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so we'll make a start. We've got to write two electron configurations, one of a chromium atom and the other of a Cr3 plus ion. Just got to be careful with chromium. It's one of the weird ones where it has the 4s1 configuration rather than 4s2. So it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, 3d5. Now remember, these can be in any order, so you could have 4s1, 3d5, that's fine. So Cr3 plus ion, we need to lose the 4s electrons first, that's why I write them at the end. So we're going to lose that and two of these, which gives us that. Okay, so moving on to B now, so we've got to balance the two half equations and then combine them to form the overall redox reaction. So easy one to start with. The zinc's balance already, but we just need two electrons to balance the charge. Moving on to the other one, we've got two chromiums on the left, but only one on the right, so we need a two in front of that. We've got seven oxygens on the left, only one on the right, so if we put a seven in front of the H2O, and that gives us 14 Hs, so we need 14 H+. So moving on to the charges now, so I'll just ignore the electrons for a moment. So 2 minus with 14 plus, so that's 12 plus on the left. We've only got 4 plus on the right. So we need to bring this 12 plus to down to 4 plus so it matches that. So we need 8 electrons. So when we combine the two half equations to get the full redox reaction, we need the electrons to disappear. So basically we need to multiply this first equation by 4. That'll give us 8 electrons on the right. We've already got eight electrons on the left of the other half equation, so they will cancel when we add them together. So the overall redox reaction looks like that. Moving on to part C, so we've got to say what type of reaction is taking place. So essentially all that's happened here is the water ligands, the six water ligands, have been substituted by six ammonia ligands. It says hexaamine, so six ammonias and now in this um, chromium-3 complex after the reaction, so that's ligand substitution. So in terms of the equation, we get this here, so I'll just quickly explain that. All six water ligands have been replaced by six ammonia ligands. We know the charge is still 3 plus from the Roman 3 there. First part of D, I've already put the definition in for a ligand, so that's a species which bonds to a central metal ion by donating a pair of electrons or you could say, instead of that, you could say by forming a coordinate bond or a date of covalent bond. How is this ion able to act as a bidentate ligand? Well, it must be able to donate two pairs of electrons. How is it able to do that? Well, it can donate a pair of electrons from that O- and from the nitrogen, so the lone pair on both. And the final part of D, why does this exist as a mixture of stereoisomers? You'll notice I've already drawn up my empty octahedra. So all I'm going to do is show the ligands. So I'm just doing a very simplified version of the ligand. Remember they attach via the nitrogen and the O minus. So I'll just do the first one. Um, and o. Okay, so the mirror image of this is a non is non superimposable on the left hand one so that means that it can exhibit optical isomerism so if i just draw the mirror of this now so now we'll just qualify that by writing something like this the mirror images are non superimposable so this shows optical isomerism So moving on to part E now, we've got to work out um, the empirical formula of A, which you can see I've already written up there, so I'll just explain that. So obviously we just put the percentages over the relative atomic masses, that gives us the moles, make sure these are the three significant figures. Divide everything by the smallest, so obviously that 0.794, so we get this ratio here. Obviously we can't have something 0.5, so we double it all out, and we get a 2 to 8 to 2 to 7 ratio of atoms so therefore the empirical formula of A 
must be this here. So which ions are making up compound A? Well, hopefully you recognise the dichromate 6 ion there, so a Cr2O7 2 minus ion. So that leaves two ammonium ions, two NH4 plus ions. So moving on to the rest of the question. So I've created like a little flow chart summarising all the information we're given. So A has been heated. It's formed B, which is the green oxide with this MR. C, which is a gas, and we're told at room temperature and pressure, 1 dm cubed um, has a mass of 1.17 grams, and it also makes H2O. So we'll deal with B first. What's going to be the formula of this green oxide? It's obviously an oxide of chromium. If it was chromium 2 oxide, it would just have the formula CrO, which isn't heavy enough. It wouldn't give you 152. So your next option is chromium 3 oxide, so that would be Cr2O3. And that does indeed have an MR of 152. So B is Cr2O3. So moving on to gas C now. So how do we deal with this information? Well, we know that the molar gas volume, one mole of any gas, occupies a volume of 24 decimeters cubed. So if we multiply this 1.17 by 24, we're going to find out the mass of what 24 dm cubed is, and therefore we're going to find out the molar mass of C. So you can see that's given us an MR for C of 28.08, so that means C must be nitrogen, N2. And finally the equation, so here's the equation for the heating of A. I've shown the correct formula for it, obviously we've established the ions, so I'm going to write the, the formula correctly there. You could just write that, that's fine. So that's heating up and breaking down to give the Cr2O3, the nitrogen gas, and we need four waters to balance the equation.